Hello students, welcome to the class. Today we will do our uh, body center cubic unit cell. We will find out the relationship between the uh, distance between the nearest neighbor D that we as we have done in FCC and uh, the edge length. This is your edge length A. This is edge length. This, this is a cube. So this is also A. This is edge length. That is also edge length. This is also edge length and also the radius of the particle. We will find out relationship in these three as we have done earlier. So, uh, and here we have body center. So, one particle we have here uh, on the corner as you know and one is at the center. So, if I mark it as A and this point as D, then AD line, if it is you just say the straight line, this AD is a body diagonal. It is body diagonal. <coughs> and if this point is B, this point is C, then this line is a face diagonal. So AC is a face diagonal. So we have a body diagonal and face diagonal and our body center particle is present at the body diagonal and we are doing BCC so we will consider this point so nearest neighbor so one particle here one particle here and one is here so if I draw separately this AD for you then it will be more clear this is the body centered particle if this is the center of this and this is the sphere the particle present and here at the point, this is point D, this is point A. Here is your another uh, particle, this is another particle, circle. And this is radius, this is radius, this is radius, this is radius. And these are the two uh, nuclei to the centers of the two atoms. And so this is your distance of the nearest neighbor. So here from this diagram, it is clear that AD is equal to 4R. You can say it as a equation 1 and uh, uh, <coughs> here if you just see the distance D, D is equal to 2R. So D is equal to 2R, this is a, a relationship between distance and radius that you can see over here and now here we will consider so we will have to find out the relationship as I told between A, D and R. So we will have to find out D in terms of A and R also in terms of A that is edge length. So here to do that, that here you will have to find out the, uh, the same length of AD. So AD if you have to find out you will have to consider the triangle A, C, D. So in right angle triangle ACD you have got uh, AD square is equal to you know that will be your AC square plus CD square. So AC square we do not know and CD is A because that is your edge length. This is your edge length so this is A square. So we can find out AC if we consider the right angle triangle ABC. So in a right angle triangle ABC, we will have AC square is equal to what? AB square plus BC square. So AB is edge length A square. BC is also your edge length. So this is also A square. So it will be 2a square. So ac is equal to your under root 2a. This will be two, under root 2a square. So ac will be under root 2a. This value we will put up here. Under root 2a whole square. If we solve it we will have 2a square plus a square. This will be your 3a square. And if we take it ad. Then this will be your under root 3a. So value of ad we have got which I am going to put up here. So we have found out that 
AD is equal to root 3A. Let this be equation 3. So now we can solve it. Uh, AD is equal to 4R and AD is equal to root 3. So from equation 1 and 3 we have root 3 is equal to 4R. So R is equal to root 3A upon 4. So you can find it out the value of this. So this will be your uh, root 3 uh, divided by 4 is equal to 0.43. So 0.4338. So it means that radius of this particle will be 0.433 times of the edge length. Okay. And then you can find out D. D is equal to 2R. So D is equal to 2R. The value of R you can put up here. So 2 into 0.433A. So it will be 0.866A. So the distance between the nearest neighbor will be this much 0.866 times of A. So you have found out here this. And also uh, if this I take as equation 4. So from equation 4. We can also write that A is equal to 4 upon root 3 R. Let this be equation 5. Now you can find out the packing fraction. Packing fraction we have done for phase center previously. So what is packing fraction? Here I write value of A. A is 4 upon root 3 R. And this is our equation 5. So this is equation 5. So packing fraction is your volume occupied by uh, particles, particles in BCC upon total volume of the unit cell BCC. So volume occupied by the particle will be your what? That is volume of one particle multiplied with the total number of particles. So total particle in BCC we have done earlier will be 2. Uh, 1 eighth of 8 plus 1 full. So 2 into 4 by 3 pi r cube. <coughs> Upon total volume of the unit cell, edge length is A. So A into A into A will be the volume. So A cube. So this will be your packing fraction. If we put up, if this is your equation 6, then value of A from here can be put up here. So you will have 2 into 4 upon 3 pi r cube upon 4 by root 3 r whole cube and if you solve it then you will have 2 into 4 into 22 into r cube this 3 will be down 7 5 values 22 upon 7 here it will be 4 for the 16 16 for the 64 and the r cube and this root 3 into root 3 will be 3 and root 3. So if I take this up. So here I will write this as root 3 into 3 more here. And then if you solve it. What it will be? Uh, 16 and uh, 3 and 3 will be cancelled. And uh, 2 and 8 and 2 for the array. 2 on the 2, 2 on the 2. R cube and R cube will be cancelled. So what we will have? We will have 11 into root 3 upon 7 into 4 is 28. So if we solve it, what do we find? We see 11 multiplied with the root 3 is equal to 
डिवाइडेड बाय ट्वेंटी एट इज अ जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स एट जीरो फोर तो दिस इज द पैकिंग फ्रैक्शन ऑफ बी सी सी एंड इफ यू फाइंड आउट हाउ मच परसेंटेज ऑफ दिस इज एफिशिएंसी पैकिंग एफिशिएंसी वी फाइंड आउट इन परसेंटेज सो इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई इट विथ हंड्रेड इट विल बी सिक्सटी एट पॉइंट जीरो फोर परसेंटेज सो efficiency okay so this is about bcc and now we will see the close packing close packing in uh, crystals close packing in crystals so in a crystal you will see some point in a crystal the constituent particles the constituent particles these constituent particles you can say units that is points constituent particles are arranged in such a way that the arrangement that the arrangement has this is important what number 1 minimum energy minimum energy if energy is minimum then stability will be maximum so maximum stability and the second is minimum empty space minimum void so maximum density is space empty space is empty space minimum empty space so it means that density is maximum so here you can write maximum density now close packing you have to do in 2d crystal and then in your 3d crystal so this a uh, first one is close packing close packing in 2d two dimensional so length and breadth only so in this case what is there the same size same size particles of metals generally same size particle are placed are placed side by side when they are placed side by side what happens if this is your particle this is placed side by side then what is there if you have here this the plane and on this you are putting balls one ball next ball all there so first uh, row will be formed that first row will be called that edge of the crystal so when they are arranged side by side then edge of crystal is a formed now is starting from the first row this is first row is starting from the first row the subsequent row if this is your first row here then edge of your crystal then second row will be right behind this so uh, starting from the first row the subsequent the subsequent uh, particles or subsequent row particles are arranged in two different ways 
are arranged particles subsequent row particles are arranged in two different ways to build what for to build a crystal plane so first row is form the second row pattern will be changing in two ways it will be so the first way is called in 2d close packing the first way is called a square close packing in 2d crystal or in 2d so how it will be that is the edge i just showed to you that edge of the crystal is formed this is edge of the crystal is formed first point that you know already and then the adjoining rows adjoining rows or particles will be how that one over the other the next particle will be over there this is first row row first this is second row this is first row so first row particles are right above the particles in the first rows particles of the second row are right above the particle of the first row then particles of the third row will be right above the particle of the second row and the part this is your second row the sorry this is third row now particles of the fourth row will be right above the particles of the particles are of the same size this you keep in mind this is your fourth row and uh, the particles of the fifth row will be overlapping the particles of the fourth row okay and so on so i need five rows so that's why i have drawn so if i take this the central the other thing this is a flat thing okay there your first row behind this second row third row fourth row if ball ball line your uh, take it one row second row third row fourth row fifth row so this is okay and so this is the central particle this is in direct contact with this with this with this and with this four uh, particles are in direct contact so its coordination number is four remember that that the coordination number for close pack uh, square close packing in two days four why because if we just uh, join these points if you join these uh, points so you will have a square formed that's why it is called a square close packing in this what is there that particles are having vertical alignment and they are also having horizontal alignment if you draw the perfect circles then they have vertical alignment and they have horizontal alignment and in this it is formed that that the occupied space the play space which is a occupied a space occupied is a 52.4 percent so void empty space empty space 
is 100 minus 52.4 so 47.6 percent okay now we'll do see the the second one what was that the first your uh, edge is formed the first your the thing edge is formed the second row particles will be arranged now not like this one behind the other but it will be arranged uh, how that you see so this is the second one is called hexagonal close packing in 2d so this is your first row formed the same size particles this is same size particles when arranged in a row side by side they form the edge of the crystal so this is row 1 now the second row particle will not be sitting at the top of this will not be <coughs> overlapping the particle of the first row but uh, they will be slightly shifted towards the right hand side means the particles of the second row will be sitting in the depression formed by the particles of the first row they will fit into the depression formed by the particles of the first row so this is your row 2 now particles of the third will be in the depression of the particles of the row 2 second row and will be right above the particle of the first row so above this above this above this so like this so this is row 3 now particles of the fourth row will be sitting in the depression of this will be over the particles of the second row then this is your row 4 and one more row if i may then here in the depression of this in the depression of this in the depression of this so here you can see the particle of this second or uh, third row and first row are in alignment so particles of the first row are in alignment with the third row second row is in alignment with the fourth row and third row will be in alignment with the fifth row and so on so particles are in alignment with alternate rows and the empty space that is your void there is alignment of the void also okay or not there is alignment of the void or not there is no alignment of the void just you if you say because this is fitting in the void of this so how it will be in alignment it is not in the alignment and so here this is your hexagonal packing and here one thing more i will show to you uh, that is how the hexagonal shape is formed and here it is if i make it once again quickly from the down 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 edge row this is fitting into this and this is here fitting into this fitting into this and uh, <clears throat> one more if i show this is here this is here so this way 
it is getting arranged. So if I just see this, if I take the central one, this is in contact, direct contact with this, with this, with this, and with this, with this, and with this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So 6 of the particles are in direct contact, so coordination number is 6. So if I join this point, I will obtain a hexagon. And that's why the name hexagonal. In this, the void, it is 60.4, so 100 minus 60.4 is your 39.6%. So here we come to the now so for same. And if you compare this with your square close packing, uh, which was your 52.4 percent having occupied space. So this is having more occupied space and here uh, it was having uh, your uh, uh, more, if you see when comparison to this, there was more empty space and therefore this uh, hexagonal close packing is more efficient. It is asked why hexagonal close packing is more efficient than square close packing because it has higher percentage of occupied space uh, than uh, in comparison to this. You can give this figure also. Square close packing is having only 52.4% of occupied space and hexagonal has 60.4. So this has more vacant space, this has less vacant space and this has uh, more void, this has less void. Therefore, hexagonal close packing is more efficient and more denser. And so now we will see 3D packing. So, uh, close packing in 3D crystal. Close packing in 3D. So, in 3D packing, in 3D packing, what is done that you see? There is 2D packing, the square uh, close packing. Uh, this is arranged one over the other. 2D packing is arranged. That when I say 2D packing, it will be rows of the particle. When I say 3D packing, it will be layer of the particle. How it is? That is, if this is as I told, in uh, your square close packing and uh, hexagonal close packing, if you pile up, if you place one particle layer next there, next to next this, if you are placing it in a row, so edge of the crystal is formed, next row will be behind this, next row will be behind the second row, then fourth row will be behind third row. So this way it is forming uh, here uh, horizontally. Now when we come to 3D, then this is already laid down and the next layer will be placed over this. So next layer, so here it is one ball, so next ball will be placed at the top of that. So when I say layer, I mean 3D. And when I say row, then I mean 2D. So you should have a very clear concept about 3D and 2D packing. So in 3D packing, 3 dimensional packing, 2D packing pattern is used. And this 2D packing pattern is used in two ways. So the first is your, this is used in two ways. And the, the first one is what? That your square close packing which you have. What was the square close packing? That uh, the row which is formed here. Here I show on this. The edge of the crystal which is formed by piling, piling the square. Then use, this. suppose this is your one square uh, close packing. And this is your another square close packing. So what this you pick up and keep at the top of this. The balls are there. On that you are keeping another this ball. So this is the next row. This is the first row. This is the second row. One more I put third row. Uh, sorry, layer. First layer, second layer. And here, this is the row form. This is the row form. And that one layer is put at the top of the other. Then three dimensional packing will be there. So when this is done, how it is done that one particle will be placed at the top of the other. So there will be so. Now I am talking about the layer. So if this is the first layer, then above this will be the second layer. 
Then above that will be the third layer. I'm talking about layer. So because this is 2D board, cannot be shown that way. So remember that. And so, so on it will be carried on. So if you imagine here, that is, this is your first layer, second layer, particles are there. Then particles will the particle of the first layer and the particle of the second layer will be aligned vertically. And there is a void form between the two. That void will also be vertically aligned. So in this case, you will have to remember what? That the particles are vertically aligned as well as void is also vertically aligned. And so this way, 3D packing is done, but this is not so much efficient because void is more. The second way is that, uh, uh, that is your uh, uh, first uh, row which is formed, the first row which is forming edge, okay, then, then this row is formed. Okay, then uh, you have hexagonal, one behind the other, not there for a hexagonal, hexagonal. When I show the row, it was sitting in the depression of this. So that form is there. <coughs> and when I take up the same way another hexagonal row and place at the top of this, uh, then that will be the second layer. So I'm talking about the second layer. The second layer which is going to be placed over it, uh, that will be that will be fitting in the depression of this that will be fitting in the depression of this and now the third layer and now the third layer so second layer is clear that is more hexagonal now the third layer which has to be placed, that will be done in two ways. The third layer will not be coming and occupying this depression simply, but that third layer <coughs> going up. This is second, this is third layer. The third layer which is coming, the particles of the third layer will have two different kinds of pattern. So those two different kinds of pattern I show you. That one is hexagonal and other is FCC. So first I take up hexagonal close packing. Hexagonal close packing in 3D. So in hexagonal close packing in 3D, what is there? That is, this is your particles of the first row. Okay, as well as of the first layer. The particles of the second layer, they, as I told, are fit in the depression of the first layer. Okay, then particles of the third layer will not be fitting in every depression of this particle. They will be fitting in alternate. One is here, then won't be here, then it will be here. So what have you to remember, write down the point. That is, the particles, the particles of third layer will occupy alternate position. When they will occupy alternate position then particle of the third layer will be right above the particle of the first layer. Okay. So there will be the alignment of the particles between of the first layer and the third layer. And the particle of the second layer will be in alignment with the particle of the fourth layer and so on. So this way the pattern will be there. So again now what will happen, we, after this is fourth layer we will have fifth layer, so particle of third layer will be with fifth layer, there will be the alignment, it means the first is in alignment with the fifth. So alternator, rows, alternator layers will be in alignment, the alternate uh, layer particles will be in a 
alignment. Okay, and so in this case, the coordination number is found to be twelve. The coordination number is twelve. Coordination number is a uh, twelve means one particle is surrounded by twelve particles. Uh, six in the same plane and three above the plane and three below the plane. Remember that six of them will be in the same plane and three particles will be above the plane and three will be below the plane. And so we'll come. To, I'll show you the structure. Look the structure. So. Uh, in this case, you saw the first uh, uh, layer particles are in alignment with third, and uh, second layer is in alignment with fourth. So, if this is your particle of the or more higher, I mean, this is the particle of first layer having the center of this, and this is the particle of the third layer this is first layer and this is this is first layer and this is third layer okay and here your uh, if i show the alignment through this dotted line central i should make this is dotted line okay then the second layer which we will be having in the middle of the toe, they are very close, they are not so far. For your convenience, I am showing them far. So one particle I show here of the same size, it should be and one here. So how it goes, just see. That is, uh, suppose this is your one layer, okay. And this is your second layer, and this is your, this is, uh, or you take this way, this is your first layer, this is your third layer, and this one is your second layer. First layer, second layer, third layer. So I'm talking about second layer. So here, the particle here which is at the center in the first layer, that is right above the second layer, but it is not above the particle in the second layer. This is not above the particle in second layer, but it is in the void, above the void. So this axis is passing through the void and coming to this third layer. And in third layer, when it is coming, then it is coming right over the particle which is placed over it. So alignment is between the particle of the first layer and the third layer. This is marked as A, this is marked as B, this is marked as A. So this pattern is called A, B, A, B, A, B. A, B, and so on. Okay. And uh, now I show you further. Uh, so if this is your particle, so there should be six in number. So how to show six, I draw more close. Uh, or at the center rather. Uh, this is one. And this is the line passing through. And here is one, here is one, here is one, here is one, here is one and here is one. So these are the centers. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one is surrounded by six and this is structure you imagine here. So three are below and above that, then three will be if I draw this, uh, this is one here, one here, and one here. This will be taken up. Then this structure will come. Okay, this is your uh, second layer. This is your first layer. Or if you go opposite, this is first layer. This is second layer, third layer, whatever way you go. So this is carried on. This pattern is carried on. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. So this is A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Will be carried on and so six are in the same plane for around this one two three four five six six are in the same plane three are below and three are above the plane 
Now the second pattern. The second pattern is a face centered. Or I show you it's a shape also. If you see the shape, how the shape is drawn. Hexagonal. Crystal, how the crystal looks. So the crystal looks uh, like this. This is if this is the plane, so one is there at the center. Then uh, I take now this is your first layer, A layer, these are the particles. Here we have one at the center. Then the middle three will be one here, one here, one here. This is A, B, A. One, two, three or one, two, three, four. That way you go. So six in the same plane, three above the plane, three below the plane. Hexagonal. Now we come to the Second pattern as I told that there will be the second pattern that is first layer as it is at the top of this will be the second layer okay second layer little depression this way third layer particles in this you saw third one sitting at the alternate depression in this case what is there that is edge will be formed this is of the first layer. Second is footing here, no doubt. Okay. To do that side. Third particles will be listened carefully where it will be cannot be shown on the flat board. So listen third particles where they will be. The third part the particles of the third layer, they will <coughs> not be occupying alternate depression like the previous one where they will be putting they will be covering listen the particles of particles of third layer will be covering the void of first layer which has not been covered in second layer. Is this clear to you? First layer which is formed, it has some void. When the second layer is placed at the top of this, such a way that particles are putting in the depression of this, as I showed you, putting in the depression of this, so it is shifted to the right side. Then, these particles are not covering some of the void. Okay. So third layer particles, they are fitting only in those voids of the first layer which have not been covered in the second layer. This is what it means. So the particles of the third layer are not in alignment with the first layer. Particles of the third layer are not in alignment with the second layer also. So which particles are in alignment with the first layer? That will be the particles of the fourth layer. So particle of the fourth layer, they will be in alignment with the particle of the first layer. So they will be fitting where? They will be sitting where right above the particle of the first layer alignment will be there. Okay. So, in this case, uh, that is your uh, coordination number is 12. <coughs> Again, same like hexagonal. 6 are in the same plane. 3 are above and 3 are below. 
So I draw the diagram quickly for you. That is here. Uh, the shape obtained is cubical. More up I go. This is. This is the cubical shape if you see. So here particles are, what you have to remember, particles are parallel to the diagonal of the unit cell. Diagonal of the, this is a cube. And it has four sides. So center of this side is this. So one particle is here. Center is here. And of this face. Then center of this face. Center of this face. Here. Center of the back and center of the front. So you can see here we have one. Here first layer. Or I mark it as A. These six are there. This is B. These six are there. This is C. And this is A. First layer, second layer, third layer, fourth layer. This is right above this. So alignment with this particle and this particle. So this pattern is A, B, C, A, B, C. Is this clear? So six are in the same plane. Three are below and three will be above the plane. Or else you can also see very easily. If you take up this the front one. This is if you take the front, the top your uh, cubicle thing. So we have four around this, around this particular, any particle, so if I choose this one, around this four are in the same plane, okay, then four are below, then four are, if you just say this is, uh, around this, this is one, two, three and four, these are in the same plane, then four will be below, so one, one dash, two dash, uh, three dash, four dash, these are below. So, 4 are below and is cubical equal if I keep, then that will be 4 above. So, if cubical wise you see, then in the cube, in the cube 4 are in the same plane, 4 and 4 are above the plane and 4 are below. But if you see layer wise, then layer wise, 6 are in the same plane, 3 are above and 3 are below the plane. And here, <coughs> both of them are having... Uh, occupied uh, space 74 percent so both are efficient equally so this is all about your uh, this thing example also you can learn example of cubicle this is called ccp cubicle close packing because particles are at the center of each face so this is also called fcc 3d and uh, the example of the ccp is your or noble metal what do you know that silver gold and uh, copper these are having this structure where magnesium zinc they are having hexagonal structure so that's all about your close packing uh, your syllabus is quite reduced because voids have not to be taken and without void i have to explain to you Types of void have they, uh, they have removed, octahedral and tetrahedral void. So it is very difficult uh, to explain without the uh, telling the shape of the octahedral and uh, tetrahedral void. So no odd shape of the void has been used. Only directly I am teaching you the shape on the basis of the layer and the row. So that's all student, this much part you have to do. And uh, next we will be doing types of crystal. Till then, bye.